It, was, uh, it wasn't too bad, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Speaking to the boys just before, um, uh, sort of thanking everyone involved at the football club and um, support staff, the medical staff, the physios. Um, it was actually pretty easy. It was when I got to the boys that it was the most difficult. Um, those 100 games that I managed to uh, ooze out of myself, I played with you know, a handful of those guys in that room. And uh, you know, I've, I've sweated with them, I've bled with them, I've hurt with them, and um, you know, I'm just sort of temporarily saying goodbye to them now. So uh, it, was, uh, it was difficult, but um, I mean, I walk, out, I walk away from this experience in this wonderful club with uh, a best friend in Adam. Um, I mean, we came to the, to the club at the same time and uh, we go out at the same time. And when I injured my hamstring last year, um, you know, I had a couple of operations in successive weeks and there was one consistent thing apart from my family and, and my girlfriend and that was uh, Adam Selwood came and visited me at every hospital that I was in in those three weeks. And, and probably at that point, I knew that I got a pretty special friend there. So. If, uh, if that's all I walk away from this football club with, then I'm a pretty lucky guy. So what's, what's harder or more hurtful to give the game away or come to that realisation or some of the awful injuries you've had? Um, I mean, I'm probably, well, I'm not the first and I won't be the last that has to walk away because of injury. Um, I've done a lot of reflecting. And I've had a lot of time to reflect over the last sort of 18 months because of my hamstring and now my wrist. and. Uh, as much as every injury and every uh, rehab session I did was hard work and I fought uh, hard within myself to continue to push along, I look back and I probably wouldn't have done it any other way. Um, I can sleep well at night knowing, well I didn't sleep well last night, but I can sleep well hopefully most nights knowing that I, I gave everything and I used everything out of myself that um, that I could and uh, was hopefully a great servant to this football club. Crazy as it might seem, the Sellers has talked about a premiership victory. It's, it's ridiculous to Australians that your better memory that the losing grand final is yeah. out there sort of thing. Yeah, uh, I mean, and that was part of, of the driving force uh, that kept me going um, through all those injuries. Uh, I mean, I was lucky enough to play in a grand final. There's a lot of players that, um, that don't get to do that. And uh, so I got that experience. Um, I shared a premiership with these guys. I didn't get to play on the day, but uh, I'd like to think I was a big factor in the first half of that year. Um, and as difficult as it is to walk away uh, without an AFL premiership, I've, I've got a couple of premierships with the Subiaco Football Club, uh, which I hold pretty dear to me. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, unfortunately, you can't play forever as, as much as we'd all like to but um, pretty content with, with what I've achieved. Mark, do you, because of your injuries, and it's a rare run, do you ever feel, or did you ever feel hard done by? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I probably had a, a pity party, as my mum would call them, for a couple of days after each injury. Um, but I, I tended to get along pretty quickly um, because, uh, We've got a group of guys in a football club that's got such a strong vision. I always tried to relate back to that. Um, I tried to base everything I did on resilience, uh, understanding that uh, that these challenges were dealt to me because I could handle them. Um, they're obviously not the world's problems. They're not anything completely drastic, but they were they were issues and they stopped me from playing the game that I love. Um, so as much as you know, the the bottom lip probably dragged on occasion. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to. I'd like to think that, you know, I walk away and the boys would have used me for some sort of inspiration, um, in seeing how hard I worked just to get myself right to play a game of football with them. Which year did you enjoy most? Obviously, there was the 05 Grand Final. You had a great year in 2011. Which which was most enjoyable? Um, it's an interesting one. It's sort of your most enjoyable moment in your career. Uh, for me, probably putting on an Eagles jumper to start with. Um, I mean, I got brought up uh, diehard East Perth and West Coast Eagles um, from my dad, who just worded Wusher up before saying, um, you know, should I let Mark hang on for one more year? I would have loved to have seen him in a Royals jumper. Um, but uh, the West Coast Eagles have, have always been my goal and my passion. And I knew from a young age that I was capable of playing AFL football. Uh, I just needed the opportunity. 
and I would do everything in my power to make sure that um, it worked out favourably for me. So I'm forever grateful for that opportunity. Um, and then it was just uh, a matter of, of living through some, some tough times, but some really awesome times. The grand final was, was amazing to be a part of. It was devastating to lose. And to be a part of a, a resurgent 2011 team that went from bottom of the table to playing off in a prelim was, um, was phenomenal. I remember the tape just went off, so someone's recordings. Um, I remember uh, standing arm in arm with the boys in the qualifying final opposite Collingwood and it was a really surreal moment because I was sitting there, I was standing there looking at them and thinking, wow, these guys were top of the table last year and all of a sudden we've gone from bottom to playing them in a qualifying final and um, being able to step up and change roles and um, play my role for the side and, and be involved in such a, such a great year was, was really um, satisfying. That 2011, that you, you were flying that year, you had a great year. Then you did the, the hammy in the NAM Cup Grand Final. Was that, the, was that the hardest injury, the worst injury? Yeah, yeah, well, as it turns out, this is probably the worst injury, um, but the hamstring injury was really tough. Uh, I had an, a great pre-season 2012, and um, all signs were sort of pointing towards having another big year 20, in 2012. Um, <clears throat> and part of my message to the boys just before was that I guess you really never know when the game taps you on the shoulder. And uh, I did that night at Amy Stadium because I never got to wear an Eagles jumper uh, again. And um, I knew it was gonna be tough to get back uh, to, to full strength and fitness and speed and, and length of kick after that injury because it was, it was such a severe injury. But um, gee, I was gonna try. I was gonna do everything I had to, to make sure I could get back there. And, um, you know, whether or not this was just someone, a greater power, telling me that um, I'm, I'm on borrowed time with, with playing football. Um, but the severity of, of what I've done to my wrist is um, far outweighs what, what any other injury I've had uh, in my career. And uh, I need to make sure that this heals properly and that I don't re-injure it. Um, because, uh, you know, there's only a couple options and one of them would be a fused wrist. And like I said to the boys, I'm, I'm not a great guitar player at the moment, so I don't know how good I'd be with a fused wrist. So, um, yeah, I, as hard as that injury was, I think this is the one that's, that's really pushed me over the edge. What's in store, Nick, aside from playing with LeBron James? Hey, uh, what, do, what do you got planned? Um, expect, yeah, except for having the most damaging backcourt in West Australia here, Adam and I. But um, look out, community basketball. That's going to come back to haunt me, I know it. Um, uh, I've got a great passion to mentor. Uh, I, love, I love seeing a dramatic change in young guys that come to an AFL club um, because I was once one of those guys and I was so raw and all I'd ever been told to do was to get the ball and kick it as far as I could. Um, fortunately for me, uh, you know, I had John here, and Tony McHale was a massive influence on my career early on, and Peter Sumich later on. Um, <clears throat> but for me, I uh, draw the greatest satisfaction from seeing them achieve and realise their dreams, and to be able to have an impact on, on players that come into a system, and to know full-heartedly how hard it is, and um, what you have to go through, not just playing, but when you're injured. Um, that's, that's essentially where my passion lies. Um, at the moment, um, I'm pretty fortunate to have done some, some media work over my time, so uh, I might come knock on your door. Um, and you might fill in for us on a Wednesday night at the community centre too. You got a good jump shot? No. Nah. Um, but yeah, that's where my passion lies, Lockie. So, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd love to, um, to stay involved, uh, whatever the area is, but working with, with young athletes. Uh, I w like I said, I w yeah, I wouldn't do it. Um, not because of my love for the Subiaco Football Club um, or my dad's love for the East Perth Football Club, but um, I've got to worry about my health. I've got to respect my body. Um, it served me as well as it could over the 11 years, and it's my turn to look after it now. So, John, John a run of injury like Mark's had would tend to change people, I would imagine. How have you seen him change? in the run of the years since the 05 Grand Final? Uh, well, you, uh, yeah, you see players grow um, from when they arrive at the club. Um, young men, and uh, you see them learn lessons and 
part of uh, the lessons are dealing with what the game throws up at them. And uh, for some, it's um, uh, taking a while to break into the side and having to do a strong apprenticeship and um, dealing with uh, you know, poor performances or where they get beaten by opponents, um, dealing with injuries. Um, that, that shapes what they learn, and Mark's taken it all on board. Um, you know, we try to uh, try to assist and give them some tools to deal with the emotions of the game, because it is a challenging game, and they are they are um, fairly young, and some in some cases uh, hitting um, emotional um, speed humps for the first time. Um, so yeah, I've seen Mark uh, learn ways to cope and deal and, and refocus um, and, uh, and, and stay clear about his bigger picture and what he's working towards and not just feel down about you know, the, the current reality he may find himself in at different times. So um, that is, it's been a credit to him about his attitude. He's, he's achieved remarkably well um, for a remarkable career um, to plan an AFL grand final coming off the rookie list um, to earn his opportunity to get on our senior list and then to play in an AFL grand final and also um, have such a massive impact on our team coming back from 2010 and playing off in a preliminary final um, was in no small part due to Mark's form as a, as a medium-sized forward for us. Um, so uh, his attitude's been outstanding all the way. If, if, if he's fit and in form playing, at his, the top of his game. Is he in your best 22? Yeah, I think uh, his, his performance in 2011 rates up there with um, all our gun small forwards. You know, it rates up there probably just behind Lecker's best years um, but, uh, and behind Phil Matura's best years. But uh, other than that, it rates up there with, with all of our good forwards in kicking 40-odd goals. 41. Yeah. 41. Yeah, I should have said 40. Oh, that might yeah. have been 43. I think I gave off 41. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it was an outstanding season. And I, I've spoken to Mark about it. Just to, to know that he, he got recruited playing mainly as a forward, uh, played a really key role for us as a small defender for a long period of time and played on some gun forwards for the opposition. But eventually worked his way back forward. We, we were looking for someone to play that sort of role. I'd spoken to Summer about it. We challenged Mark to um, retrain himself back up to play, um, to finish his career as an AFL forward. And, and he did it way above our expectations, I would think. And um, yeah, it was an outstanding season for him. And we were just so disappointed that we didn't have him um, from then on, from last year and this year. What, what did you see in him to make you think he could go from basically half back to, to half forward? Well, Summer said it was just because he was a left footer. <laughs> you know, that was pretty basic for Sum. Um, no, speed, um, good decision maker, um, yeah, just, and just the way he played the game, we thought he had the attributes to be able to play forward, work ethic for the way the game was heading that way and for the role, he had to be able to run really strongly. And you spoke about the coach with and getting back from his lunch there with injuries, what long effect has that had for the other players to see that? Yeah, well, it's, it's a... It's a uh, great example. Nico's um, used his time in rehab and, and coming back through injuries at, at various times. There's been other young players going through that program with him and uh, he's uh, run alongside them on the training track and pushed them along and showed them his attitude is about, well, this is what you've got to do to get back. This is what it takes to, uh, to be an AFL footballer. And one of the things is coming back from injuries that you, you do have to learn how to deal with them. Um, you know, he's used uh, his experiences there. Um, I know in uh, last year he spent a lot of time um, uh, helping younger players in terms of sitting down and watching some of their tapes and talking them through uh, their roles as small forwards as well. And I know the players appreciated that as well. And Nico, just about like your wrist and the ankle, can you just tell us exactly how the injury occurred and what the process is now? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, I don't really know how it occurred, to be honest with you. I, I fell on it funny or something happened when we were playing West Perth um, and strapped it up, played the second half. Uh, it wasn't sort of till that night um, when I'd cooled down and we're having a barbecue 
I couldn't turn the T-bone over, uh, that I thought there might be something, something wrong um, with my wrist. So I got it scanned on the Sunday and expecting there to be a little something, but not so drastic. Um, I injured the scapholunate ligament, which um, is kind of the keystone to your wrist. Um, it, it allows basically most wrist functions. So it's crucial to, um, to getting it to heal and, and obviously uh, for my future and for my health. And, and um, uh, yeah, it's one of those things that so small, but um, so ginormous in its impact. Um, from here, I've got to, uh, I've got to get the pins removed from it next Tuesday. So it's been uh, eight weeks since surgery and, and then I'll be another four weeks um, in the splint. And, and that's probably another three to six month build up from there. So it's, uh, it's a pretty severe one.